Signal is a movie of a young man named Nick that is seduced into following an unknown hacker named Nomad, which turns out to be, you know, just a garden variety, run-of-the-mill, alien robotic humanoid. So I'm over here at one of my favorite channels, Shaking My Head Productions. He doesn't necessarily agree with everything that he puts together on here, which are usually compilations of like-minded topics that go together. But he's talking about this Gnostic New Age programming in plain sight, which is actually really, really, really important because as we've been discussing, the game plan, and they use the symbol of the tree, although not just the tree. I've done videos talking about this. I, will, I invite you to go check out all my videos they're all 15 minutes. They're pretty quick and to the point. But see, what's happening is as you have the goal of Jesus Christ coming to fashion the one new mankind, eternally forgiven, eternally to dwell with God for all times, given a new body, given eternal life and all of that through the gift of the cross, through the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus. We talk about that all the time. What you have to understand is that Satan he comes and he takes that plan, but he inverts it. And because it's a counterfeit and it looks so much like the real thing, there's been a lot of people that are tricked. And you have to deny Jesus. So it's a very firm, hard line in the sand of a rejection, which is the unforgivable sin. There's just a million ways that people can commit the unpardonable sin. But in the end... The unpardonable sin is telling Jesus, I don't want to become your creation. There's a million ways that people do that in the in the days of the in, in Jesus's time, the Pharisees that didn't want to repent and come to him, they said, Oh, you're casting out demons by by the devil. And Jesus was like, Well, that totally doesn't make sense. And how in the devil's kingdom stand if <laughs> if I'm casting demons out? I mean, it was just kind of one of those no dumb moments. Like, let's just use a little logic here, folks. And Jesus said, A house that is divided cannot stand. And so that just that was that was perfect. But that's not the only way. That one prime example of how a person can commit the unpardonable sin. Think about in the world today, one of the biggest ways that they've had for a long time nurturing this idea of atheism and building that up to be this big, huge thing. I don't believe in God. I don't have all the evidence. I'm just this tiny little creation and I know everything, but I know that there's no God. And what it really actually ends up being is that you think you're God, which is how you're determining all of life and reality through your tiny little brain that weighs three pounds. I'm so impressed. And you're reasoning that you don't want there to be a God because you don't see enough evidence. But in all reality, it's because you're standing in the place of God. And it's funny because you have this whole entire earth that all says they believe in a God. And most of them believe in the God of this world. And of course you have Christians that believe in the one true God, Yahweh and Jesus Christ. But the smallest percentage of all people on the planet, about seven and a half billion, the smallest percentage statistically are the atheists. When you consider all the religions and all the religions say there is a God, there is something beyond me even if they attribute that to the fakey fakington Lucifer, who is the false god of this world. So the idea that an atheist doesn't believe in God is kind of a misnomer from the get-go. It's, it's, they believe in a god. They're just not willing to say it's one that's outside of them. They're the god. They're, they're the fake god is how I view that. But anyhow... So that, that is another example on how you have people that are hardened and that embrace through sustained unbelief one of the ways that you can commit the unpardonable sin. But that's not the only way. I mean, we could, we could talk about all the ways that people tell God no, and there are so many. 
There are some people that just honestly love sin more than they love anything else. And when you have this whole rainbow mafia that is getting their fingers into everything from the legislation to the schools to uh, drafting public social norms, changing language, 1984 Marxism, you will say what we tell you to say. You will believe what we tell you to believe. We're going to teach your children this. And on and on and on it goes. It puts people in a position that hardens them and keeps them away, fences them out from coming to Christ and repenting. Repenting to be born again means that you agree with Christ that you're evil and I'm evil and we're evil. And that's why we need his help. So if you have a movement of people for whatever reason that they hold on to in their idolatry and go, I can't or I won't or I will not trust in that man who is Yahweh, who is God in flesh, to take my sins for me because you're not even admitting what sin is. You've got a big problem. So you, you, without the shedding of the blood... You can't even be saved. And if you're to the point where you're not even repenting of your sins or acknowledging that you sin, you break his ten commands by thought, word, and deed, which is the definition of evil, because anything that is not of God, that is opposed to God, that is opposed to good, is therefore evil. Very simple. And so when you have people that refuse to repent, they can't even be saved. And so... Suffice it to say that there is just a thousand ways that mankind can tell God, I don't want you. And they don't want that, that blood on the cross to pay for their sins, where God is saying, I'll take care of the whole bill for you. Past, present, future, all sin. I will pay that thing for you. And then I'll make you, here it is, I'll make you a new creation in Christ. I'll make you an eternal, forever mankind that will dwell with me on a new earth that I'm going to fix up. A new heaven, this is all in the back in uh, Revelation 21, combined together God and man together in relationship. I'm not saying man becomes God. I'm not saying that. But we, we unionize with him in a sense in relationship, which is what he started out with in the garden. So what you have is this unfolding plan of the ages where Satan comes in and he takes God's good plan for new creation and he flips it on his head because that's what he does. And so you have man, I want to show you something. You have man that is being prepped to become a satanic creation in the Antichrist. All this marrying of technology. Sorry. It's been mysticism together to make a one new mankind. A post human mankind. Basically. Which is, in and of itself, a rejection of Jesus. And so, this idea that you can put this technological mechanism inside of your right hand or your forehead to craft a post-human new mankind, a new family tree, a new abominable branch, this, this coming antichrist, this coming post-human amalgamation, marriage between the clay, the, the human flesh, and the technology, the iron, the Daniel 2 warned us was coming. Right? There's a thousand ways that they're showing you this stuff. And Nicholson's been talking about it forever. And it's, you know, you see this past technology, this past way he'll explain to you this alchemy, this magic. That's kind of been pushed out a little bit to some extent for the technology. But I'm like, those two things are married together. Sophia, that is the AI robot, poster child, plus the magic, the alchemy witchcraft and the rebellion now what's really interesting is and see i don't put much stock into these dates whatsoever because i think that they're actually coming faster than what they're telling you and this is trickery and deception so that you go oh that's way out there that's totally not even going to affect me now um turn the tv on and tune out and don't worry about anything 
if you've studied this <clears throat> this avatar 2045 this this goal that they have to create this post-human new creation in the antichrist and you see how they kind of use this electric cue on her eyes and they're <laughs> They're telling you that they're going to put the technology in you to to fuse you together with the Internet so you can now be a superhuman. This actually makes sense with this really weird Halsey video <clears throat> that I was watching yesterday. And I want to show you now. Remember, so the blue in the eyes, right? Let me go find this song Graveyard. I'm sorry. There's not a lot I can do about that. But in, in this time lapse video. It's pretty interesting. She ends up for like whatever, seven hours or whatever, doing this unbelievably talented painting of what ends up being her. She's she's singing this song about graveyard. And I'll put the, we'll, we'll go over the lyrics too. And if I don't have time in this video, then I'll put them down below so you can see. There's a whole thing with the blue and the red that mixes together for the purple. You know, having to do with, again, it's just another way of saying that you're going to become gods, really. In this video, as she starts painting her face, do you see what's starting to elapse? Why is your eye blue, Halsey? What are you doing with that? That's weird. And she didn't even do the eyeball. <clears throat> she did her beautiful brown eyes, but what did she put around it? So I think this song, so there's always the surface meaning and then the deeper level, and they kind of play with your brain. If you just dig a little bit deeper and you think about what the Bible says is coming, which is called meditating on the word, and you look around at the messages coming through popular culture, which equates to extreme mind control, <clears throat> which they've been masters at figuring out how to do. In this painting, despite the fact that, okay, she's wildly talented, great. What, what is the substance of the message that she's telling you? She's chopped all her hair off, which is fine. I don't really care. She, she's telling you in the clearest visual language, which is how they communicate through their art. This is her transhuman idea of herself that will play out into this coming post-human, very oriented towards the Rainbow Mafia, which is why I think she put these colors in her hair. It's all about this blue. I was watching this last night, and I was like, what was the dealio with the blue around her eye? And I wasn't quite getting it. I, I figured out what that was. I figured out why she chopped her hair off. You, you know, women, biblically, when you chop your hair off, it's, it's a way of rebelling against God. <clears throat> At least it was back in the day. It's probably still the case. I don't know what she's saying with that, but I'm... I think that she's saying in this song that they're ready to throw the old humanity in the graveyard, right, and move on to this new humanity. And they're all in on this. They're, they all know about this coming Israeli king. That's why they're making this new family tree. That's why they're priming people for the... See, that's so weird. That's just so weird. That's why they're putting all this stuff in movies. Right, exactly. And Jesus talked about this, too. He's saying that he's not against technology for making things better, but he is against the evil that mankind will use to try to find another way to live forever. Because, again, you, you're, you're going to have to deny Jesus in order to do that. And that's why, other things aside, that's why the Bible says that if you take that coming mark of the beast, you're cut off. You're damned forever. There's no rest, which is a way of saying no end to your suffering because you're going to have to go pay for your own sins. You got tricked. You got scammed. And it show, it reveals your heart that you didn't care about God. You didn't care about what was good. You got tricked. You only care about you. 
And so Satan is kind of in a, in a way on his own little fishing expedition for those that are like-minded that want to, that's weird, retain their evil. Yeah, see, you want to live forever? Well, Jesus said that if you try to sneak in through any other way than the door that he established, you're a thief and a robber, and you're going to get it. <laughs> 